Hello, beautiful souls. Today I have the beautiful Brooklyn with me. I have loved connecting with her um, over the past few months and from our very first conversation out together, we've just found our type of crazy. We found our person <laughs> that we're going to be friends for life. I don't care if you don't think so, but <laughs> we're friends for life. We're stuck for sure. <laughs> um, I absolutely love what um, she has created out of her experience. So I wanted to bring that to you guys today um, to bring awareness to the support that is actually available to you guys through infertility, fertility, pregnancy loss. Um, that isn't, it isn't readily available enough, I don't believe. So Brooklyn has created um, something truly amazing and I want her to, you know, tell you guys about it today and, you know, we'll dive into a bit of her story and how she came to create it. So welcome again, Brooklyn. Thank you so much for having me. And um, yes, you are stuck with me for life. Um, but I do want to say thank you. Um, when I first started this, it was very kind of scary. And um, I have no idea what I was doing. And I still don't have any idea what I'm doing. But I know that I'm. my heart is to help people. And so we're just sticking with that, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> but from the beginning, like we connected somehow. And just your post encouraged me to like keep going through this process right um and then we became friends and you've encouraged me beyond more than i could even imagined and so um i just want to say thank you for a having me on your space and be like uh, just be my friend um and being like a cheerleader in my life and in woven social's life basically so thank you so much and i can't wait to share all about Woven Social and I can't wait to share my story with people and um, because if it helps just one person then it's well worth it right so yeah thank you so much that's so kind and I like when you when you texted me that that day I was like really I'm like, I don't even know what post I did I don't know what you saw but <laughs> it was, it was um, just inspiring and then I I commented I'm like hey I really need to hear this today and then what you responded with, I, I don't know the exact words, but it was like, um, you can do this and keep going. And you had no idea what I was doing or what I was going through, but yeah, it, it, it was exactly what I needed in that moment to hear and then to like be reaffirmed on. So yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> well, we're stuck together. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Countries, nothing can take us away from each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, no, we're and completely on different sides of the planet, so you know, distance is not even a, an issue. No, no, it actually makes the heart grow fonder. So, <laughs> yes, and one day when the, all of our countries <laughs> open up, I'm sure we will be able to actually meet in person. Oh, for sure, I'm coming there. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and. I think, you know, you know, we have some pretty amazing beaches here that I'm sure you would love. So yes. I'd be happy to show you around. All over it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> it's a date. <laughs> um, so yeah, just, I guess, tell us a little bit about your story and kind of how you came to create Woven Social. So, um, you know, my husband and I got married and, you know, you, you do the whole like, okay, we'll be married for a little bit and then we'll start having kids and then you, you, you know, the whole like plan, right? Um, and so we got married and about a year in, we were like, okay, I think we're ready, right? So we started trying, then kept trying, kept trying, kept trying. And um, about five years after being married and trying and everything else, um, we finally had our baby, but it took a while to get there. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we went through um, a finding out that we were just having a little bit of trouble getting pregnant. So we went and did the normal things. Um, took about six months on um, trying to make sure that I was ovulating. 
Um, and then from there, we took a little break. And we started seeing a fertility specialist um, and kind of figured out all the tests. And I've, I've never wanted to go to a test more, <laughs> like a medical test and say like, okay, this is gonna be my problem. I know they're gonna find something wrong with me. But I, there was never anything technically wrong. I had um, unexplained infertility, which was probably so frustrating for me. Well, it was, not probably. Um, to know that like, I wish there was a problem I had that they would say, okay, now you just take this one thing and you're done, right? We can fix this. Um, so we would try and try and try and try. We eventually started IUIs. Um, we ended up doing about five rounds of IUIs. And on our fourth one, um, very surprisingly, um, a pregnancy test came back positive. And um, it was like unbelievable at the moment to get the call. I, was, I remember I was at work, was not expecting it. I, I for sure thought, okay, just another month where um, it's gonna be enough, right? Um, and I got a call that says, you're pregnant. And immediately I just kind of like sat there and then I started panicking, like, hey, what do I do now? Like, <laughs> what do I do, right? I've been trying for so long, what do I do? And so I, you know, had this whole plan of how I was gonna tell my husband that had been delayed for so long being able to do that. So I went and I bought him this watch and I gave it to him. And um, about three weeks after getting that call, um, I had a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. um, and it was devastating. But it was devastating um, because I remember like telling a couple people mm. that um, I was pregnant because they knew kind of that I was going through what I was going through and trying so hard. Um, and the support I got in the moment wasn't um, very helpful. It was like, oh, well, you were just, you know, good thing you weren't very far along. Like you weren't, you know, you'll keep trying, it's okay. And like my world was shattered at that moment you know it's like all of these hopes built up to a moment and it was like they finally came true my dreams were finally coming true all to be just the bottom floor opening up and it falling out um so we decided at that moment to kind of like take a break for a while to kind of let our hearts heal kind of figure out where we wanted to go from there um ultimately we, we wanted a baby. We, we knew that's what we wanted, mm -hmm. um, but our hearts just needed to heal. Um, so we took probably about four months off and, and then started again. The next IUI didn't work. Then we went to um, IVF and that was a different than it sounds, but um, we knew that's what we wanted. Our first one we did uh, was very wasn't uh, was uh, unsuccessful, which was very heartbreaking. Because at that moment, you know, we got to a point where we we're like, okay, you know, the whole ovulation medicine didn't work, um, IUIs didn't work. Okay, IVF like, there like where do you go above that, right? Yeah. If this doesn't work. <clears throat> did IVF and, and that one was unsuccessful and a we were out of money at that point <laughs> it's like yeah. we were broke um and just like frustrated and heartbroken all over again um those those heartbreaking moments that we've had before when we had the miscarriage just kind of all came back mm -hmm. like people basically and uh, we were like, okay, well, we have to stop because like, until we A, get more money and we're ready for this, we have to stop. Um, and then somehow, some way, a friend of my mom's ended up calling us and saying like, hey, I heard what happened um, and I wanna pay for your next round of IVF. And so uh, we were like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Do you know how much this is? Like you understand like the dollar amount we're talking about here, right? Um, and so she she was like, yeah, like tell me how much and here's, let's go. I'll call the doctor and pay for everything. And so we did it and um, I ended up, that was successful mm -hmm. and I got pregnant and my pregnancy lasted the full nine months. And I had a beautiful baby boy after five years of trying so hard. Um, 
And I remember my whole pregnancy being so scared that I was gonna go to a doctor's appointment and they weren't gonna hear the heartbeat or like never letting him, like never feeling safe during that pregnancy per se. Yeah. I remember telling my husband like, I wish I had a peephole in my stomach that I could just like open it and look and say, okay, you're still moving around. You still have a heartbeat, you're okay. And oh, I, I thought, you know, yeah, I felt like I got to the, I would get to the second trimester and feel at peace. No, like it lasted the whole, I remember sitting in the hospital bed about to give birth being like, just get him out of me. That way I know I can see him if he's breathing, you know, like I can see him now. I can't, I couldn't tell. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I just, the miscarriage has that first miscarriage and then the unsuccessful IVF, like it just, there's so much trauma attached to it and there's so much emotions attached to it that never, I mean, it's hard to to go through a whole pregnancy and not think about those things and not look at pregnancy. Mm. Yeah, so much of what you said like resonated with me because um, what I felt as well. Um, you know, we were trying to, try, uh, trying to conceive for five years as well and did all of the things um our gp gave me medication to increase my eggs and then now that when i fell pregnant with on that medication that's when i had um the miscarriage and we had told um i had told my immediate family and also a couple of aunties and cousins um as well so what shattered me was that I was telling them that I was pregnant when I had already lost it. So that was like, you know, that was huge because I'm like, you know, the guilt, like I should have known, you know, what was happening inside of my body. Um, but yeah. And then the following pregnancy, wanting to know absolutely every single movement of you know her inside of me and like you said you wanted a little peephole I completely that's exactly where my my brain went as well like I'm like I need to be able to see her I need to be able to know that she's okay in there um and any weird cramp or sensation that would come up that would I that I would feel I'm like what was that I think I remember taking myself to the hospital with I had at the end it was just gas <laughs> it was like they're like you've eaten something that you don't usually eat like you're cramping but it's not baby cramps and I was like oh my god thank god like I just wanted to put the Doppler on me to so that I could hear her um you know I was able to really process my emotions after my loss after that first miscarriage but still the fear was consuming the fear of losing her through the pregnancy took me to the hospital made it actually made me you know I bought a Doppler for myself I know that a lot of places don't actually like talking about that but then I was like I, for my sanity, I needed to that reassurance that I, if I couldn't get to a doctor in time, that I could, you know, have a listen for her myself. Yeah. Um, but it's not like, and that's where I'm like, you have to, and like you said, you gave yourself some time to let your heart heal. They, you need that time. You need that space because if you rush into that next oh I need to do this again I need to fall pregnant again I need to fix this fix how I'm feeling it doesn't work like that you need you do need that time and you need that space to allow your your heart to heal allow your body and your mind to heal because you're rushing into something else soon like straight after it's only going to compound onto that um, so much more and be so much more intense through the pregnancy. Um, and like you said, you know how afraid you were through the pregnancy, but you did give yourself that space. So it would only have been much more intense if you hadn't have given yourself that space. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
I mean, I remember sitting at doctor's appointments and hearing the heartbeat and feeling at peace for literally one minute. And then anxiety would, would take over again of, okay, well, what if his heartbeat stopped right after the doctor got moved? You know, like, yeah. just rational thoughts that you're like, okay. But it was more, and the other thing for me was it, it just felt like it kind of robbed a little bit mm. of that joy in pregnancy because yeah. you just never felt safe, you know? You never, but you, you also were trying to guard your heart. I, I found myself, I, I don't want to speak for other people, but I found myself trying to like, guard my heart and not get my hopes too high um afraid of what if something were to happen how hard that crash would be yeah um not allowing myself to truly truly like rest in the peace and rest in the joy of finally finally being pregnant and mm -hmm. finally finally seeing those dreams fulfilled right yeah. um, and so yeah i just it, it totally takes a toll on it, I mean it doesn't after you have a miscarriage it doesn't stop you know as soon as the bleeding stops or um you know as soon as you're ready to try again like it, it still stays with you I mean you also still celebrate that life so you know yeah and that's in, like it it does it, it you take it with you um it's not something that and even it's you like you experience the miscarriage it's not something that stops at that point when or when when you have a pregnancy and it's not something that stops after you have your healthy baby either like that those emotions that trauma is it's always part of you but it's something that you have to learn to um, navigate and co like have the tools to cope when those really tough emotion the really big emotions come the triggers come you need to be able to have the the ability to move through that and process that um because yeah i mean i've heard it over and over women wanting to fall pregnant just to fix the hole that it leaves and i'm like it's it's it doesn't work like that unfortunately um you need to really be able to acknowledge what what you have been through and because it will keep coming back <laughs> and like w like through the healthy pregnancy and through parenting after loss as well and that's why what you do is so important um is because sometimes we try to just like put blinders on right and say oh i know that um this is going to trigger me i just don't want to look at it but that's not always um, possible. Mm -hmm. And so I think the biggest, biggest thing that's missing, honestly, is what you provide is, is a way to, to walk through it and learn like how to handle those big emotions as opposed to just avoiding them. Yeah. I think it's a lot easier to just avoid the emotions, but if we are given the tools to know how to handle the big emotions when they happen, um, that's just one step forward towards mm -hmm being able to really like heal and and fully, fully heal, not just put band-aids over it. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, I think that's why, why going through a program with you or, you know, just learning the tools from you is so important because those are things that you can't see, right? You can't just, you can't like sew it up, right? It's it's emotional, it's, it's inside and it's it's gonna keep popping up until you actually learn the tools how to deal with that and and move on you know yeah absolutely um and it's it's more than just yeah it's more than just reading something it's more than just you going oh yeah cool i've read that it's actually changing your internal environment it's actually going inside and looking at yourself and being able to go okay i've got this I've got the tools, it's gonna hurt, but I can actually navigate this. I can move through this. And then the next time it comes, it's not going to be as big. It's not going to be as overwhelming and consuming. And then each time you move through that, each time you process it, it's going to be easier and lighter um, as opposed to avoiding it. The When you avoid it, it's only going to 
it will serve you for the moment, but it will keep coming back. It will keep presenting itself in a way that it will eventually make you stop and listen. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, just, there you go. Um, Mommy, and, I, I. So um, I want to sort of touch on essentially what now you have created, which is woven social. Um, what I, when I was going through my loss, obviously we had, there are a lot of support groups out there, but what I found is they kind of keep you stuck because mm -hmm. you might be moving through your emotions or you might be moving through your experience and then you go into these groups and read the stories of these women and it then puts you back into the immense grief um, and it triggers your story again the groups don't necessarily have any ways that you can navigate it it's all just I guess a validation um, of experience just a to potentially just know you're not alone although uh from my experience and from you know women that i have worked with it has been a trigger for them to go into those groups and read women's stories so you know i love what you have created because it's so different to that it's it allows women a safe space but it also allows them to get access to um, to things, to tools, to people that can help them move through where they they move through what they're going through. It's more positively geared um, and empowering women to kind of move through their experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's my goal too. Is just there's so many people who have different experiences and who have learned different things than I have. And my goal is to never be the only voice on Woven Social. I'm a very behind the scenes person, so I'm happy to not be the only <laughs> voice on Woven Social. Um, and I think there's a lot of things out there right now that are um, community driven, but there's one voice that is providing a lot of the information. Yeah. Um, and my thing with Woven Social is to allow so many people like yourself or someone who has gone through IVF and who is now a fertility coach who can bring different perspectives um, and different tools to people that I can't bring, that others can't bring. Um, and I just want a bunch of different voices out there, right? I want to highlight those voices um, and let people kind of find them on their own and have people have the access to them. Mm. So what was it that kind of gave you the idea that that's what you wanted to create? Um, so I actually, um, right at, well, in the middle of going through IVF, which was probably not smart on my part, <laughs> I just knew I wanted to do something um, to help people. And so I was going to start a nonprofit just to help financially help people because um I know it's different in different countries, you know, with the different healthcare systems and stuff, but in America, um, it's quite expensive. And so I know that that was like a huge need for us is like financial. And if your mind is off of that, then, um, then you can focus on different things. Um, so that was my goal is to start something financial. I just, I didn't know exactly how to help, but I just knew I wanted to help people who are going through the same thing. And I knew that what I was going through, I didn't want to waste it. Like, I didn't want all my experiences just to be like, oh, okay, well, I went through that. I wanted to use it for, to help, right? Mm -hmm. um, and say like, okay, I went through this now, like how can I be used to help other people through it with my experiences? Um, and obviously like, I am, I'm just not a salesperson at all like that. <laughs> Yeah, no. Like I'm more of like, here's it, here it is. And if you like it, great. If you don't, but no pressure. All good. <laughs> That's me. So I'm not gonna be able to raise money for people, right? <laughs> so um <laughs> in my mind, I was like, okay, I can't have like 
I can't give money to people if I don't have money myself to give. And then if I'm not good at fundraising money, I can't give it away, right? <laughs> so yeah. I had to like regroup. And so I was like, okay, how can I help people? And so I just started thinking about what I went through and what was the most beneficial to me. Um, and I actually was very private with everything I went through because I didn't want the solicita solicitation of other people's advice all the time. Um, I grew up in South Louisiana and you won't know this, but um, everyone is so friendly and so like, it's like a big family, but with that comes a lot of opinions and a lot of like unsolicited advice sometimes. And so I just didn't want that. So I kept everything super private, but when I found a friend who was going through the same thing, it's like, it shifted for me. And I had that support. I had someone I could talk through, talk to who understood what I was going through. It was kind of like that sounding voice of like, if I needed to just vent or if I had questions or I just wanted to talk to somebody who understood, it wasn't kind of like talking to someone who had no idea what I was talking about. Yeah. So thinking back on that and what really helped me is how I came up with Woven Social is um, just creating a space that you can find support and find encouragement. If you need to get things out and vent, get them out and vent. Like, having a safe place um there's so many things on like instagram and facebook um but also your family's on instagram and facebook and the people you, you're not really telling what you're going through is on instagram and facebook so there's some limitations there with people who want to kind of stay private and um woven well, social is just flat out just for women who are going through infertility or who have gone through infertility or any type of trying to conceive and having problems any type of it um, it's a safe place that you can find people like you. Um, also find groups, topic, spe topic specific groups, um, whether it's, you know, the ones that you've created um, or just different IVF groups or IUI groups um, for months um, and stuff like that. So it's just kind of, that's kind of how it started is knowing like what helped me and then creating that space for other people to easily yeah. access it. Yeah, and I think the biggest, I think the key is to have those people around you that know exactly what it is that you're going through. Because I think, you know, that's one of our basic needs really is to feel like you are, you are to some level really understood as a human like you know that you know what you're feeling is actually understood and the only people that you're going to get that understanding from is people that um have unfortunately gone through that same experience so to have a platform where they can take their mask off they can actually say what it is that is weighing on their heart that they haven't been able to tell anyone else and be able to have people around them to, you know, lift them up and to say, you know, you're not alone is, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And I think it is absolutely necessary because there isn't enough, there isn't enough groups out there like that. Um, and like you said on social media, you are kind of, if you do have people in your following that you don't really want to be opening up all of your intimate, you know, life to, it will stop you from actually getting the support that you need. Yeah, definitely. Um, Cause there, I mean, you go through so many things that um, sometimes make people uncomfortable. You know, if you're talking about your doctor's appointment or your gynecologist or, you know, it, it sometimes just makes people uncomfortable. So then you don't want to share with mm -hmm. them. You don't wanna, but I mean, some of those things are just very private. Like, I know you get to the point when you go to your doctor, you're like, okay, whatever. Like you've seen it all, right? But I don't want everybody else to see it all, right? So sometimes you just want to keep those things private. Like, I don't want the person I went to high school with knowing all my business about how I'm trying to get pregnant. I, yeah. I, I'd rather not, you know, <laughs> personally. Yeah. So it's just, yeah, having a place where you can just be vulnerable and 
and know that people are going to be there to encourage you and lift you up. And, um, or you can just ask questions, not that it's the, you know, scientific way, but people's experience. I learned so much, so many things from knowing what other people have gone through mm -hmm. and sharing their experiences and okay you know what is this test like we have discussions um on there and they're, they're kind of like set up like forums and so you can go on there and say hey i have this test tomorrow that i'm taking like what do you all recommend and have people who have taken that test be able to go on there and say hey like this is what you can expect you know, I don't need a scientific paper on what I can expect. I want to like hear it from you. Like, I want to hear from someone who's done it, you know, what to expect in yeah. that moment. I, I, I like to go into things knowing, okay, I have a good idea. I don't like to be caught off guard. So <laughs> that's my thing is just, there's so many different moving pieces to it too. And, and so many different experiences, you know, you and I could have had the exact same diagnosis and we, our test results or the th the ways our doctor would have put us through the things mm -hmm. our doctor have, you know the track record we would have gone through would, could be totally different mm -hmm. you know have someone out there and be able to connect with people you're going to find someone who's going through exactly what you're going through um the same diagnosis as you or the same treatment plan as you you know what i mean yeah and someone that has gone through it and they're one step ahead of you to say okay yeah this is what you can expect and then when you're ha when you have had that test and you have gone through that and you're like well now what like now what do i do and to have it from someone who has experienced it rather than a doctor who doesn't won't probably give you all of the the terms like like all of the, what's going to what what to expect and in a way that you're going to understand it and that's what i feel is missing is as well is the information that the doctors give you are only what they want you to know it's not necessarily what you need to know um and what you know just going through the miscarriage like it was the they really downplayed all of um you know how a miscarriage will you know what to expect when i was at home um what to expect with the bleeding so they're not they don't actually tell you like i want to know what the minimum is i want to know what the maximum is i want to know like worst case scenario what could happen because i'm pretty sure i was at that worst case scenario and i was not told i was left in the dark ended up you know passing out with blood loss and um read something recently that i could have possibly been hemorrhaging and i'm just like you know i didn't even know that this that is what I was going through and when the I know waited three days and then when the ambulance came they're like why didn't you call sooner and I said well I didn't know I didn't know I had to no one gave me that information so you know to be able to talk to other women who will actually give you okay yes this is you have this is possibly your worst case scenario um you know they may not gps may not tell you because they don't want to scare you but i on the other hand i was laying at home for three days bleeding and passing out every time i stood up and then having contractions and i was like what the hell is happening now so i'm like you know um it wasn't until i was in hospital that they told me what was what was happening uh i could not felt completely in the dark so if I had you know a space like that available to me then where I could have said this is what I'm going through has anyone else experienced this then you know you'll be getting something you'll be getting a lot more than what the GPs actually are willing to to hand over yeah and sometimes you know at, at clinics or whatever those they become so callous sometimes to it and it's like, okay, here's the information I have to give you. Okay, goodbye. You know, and it's, they've done it so many times that they don't under, that sometimes it's not human. Yeah. Sometimes there's no human aspect to it of what the information they're giving you. It's like, okay, here's the black and white piece of paper. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And, and 
you know, for Woven Social, just having someone who can say, okay, now here's a human piece of what you've been told, you know, mm. here's a human experience of what the information you've been given, you know, here's yeah. what it, it means to me or, or what it meant to me in that moment, or, you know, just tips and, and advice. But the biggest, biggest thing too, is just encouragement because I could not imagine going through any sort of infertility without having at least a little bit of support. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, because it's such an emotional process. There's so many highs, there's so many lows. And if you don't have anyone who you can share those with, if you don't have anyone who's in your corner cheering you on, then your lows are gonna be lower than low than low because there's no one lifting you up. There's, I mean, there's moments you're going through it and month after month after month after month of getting no, 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 negative, negative, negative. Um, and never seeing that positive sight. I mean, it plays on you, your emotions. It plays on, you know, your mental well-being as well. Um, and just to have like a positive voice to come in of someone who's been through it or someone who's going through it and say, hey, like, you're gonna be okay. Like, I, I've got your back. I'm here to encourage you and support you. Um, that's, gonna, that's gonna help people or help women, you know, be able to cope with, with the nose a little bit better. Um, just because everyone needs support and community. And especially if you're not, if you're private about it or you don't have a big community, like that in a situation like this, then um, yeah, I just, I don't see how people could go through it without mm. that. Yeah, I, and and nor should they have to go through it alone. So, you know, society will have you believe that you have to, that you have to do it alone because you can't tell anyone about it. You can't show emotion, you can't grieve, you can't be triggered, you can't do anything because just because it society is so awkward around it right but you don't have to do this alone like literally like you it sounds like these words are thrown around a lot but you do not have to do it alone and you shouldn't have to do it alone not when there is these types of support out there um for women who can you can just jump into a group and say hey you don't even have to like tell them what what's actually happening you can just say i'm having a really crappy day and yeah. just have people around you that actually know you know what you need on that day yeah and for our groups and um, they're topic specific but you also have the ability to create a group you want you know if if, if you don't see a group on there that you know, we have PCOS, we have um, endometriosis, we have unexplained infertility, we have each month a uh, IUI group of that month, the IVF group of that month, we have inspirational posts, we have um, a group with with you with healing through pregnancy loss. Um, but if you don't find a group on social that fits any of your needs or you want to create your own, you have that ability to do so. Uh, that's one of the coolest features I personally love about the site is the ability to create your own discussion, your ability to create your own group. Um, they also will also have the ability to have virtual like Zoom meetings within that group, within those pe those um, groups. You can post pictures, you can post comments, you can post all of those things um, in the group itself. Um, yeah, I just. My biggest thing is just being a support and being a space where people can connect because, you know, we've all heard the statistics of one in eight women will go through infertility or suffer with infertility. Mm -hmm. um, that's a whole lot of people. That is a whole lot of women. Um, and sometimes we can kind of back ourselves into a corner and think that we're the only ones going through it because we don't see it because it's not advertised. Mm -hmm. um, it's not so common um, because people are private. Um, that we sometimes think we're the only one, but there, you are not the only one. And there is a army of women who are fighting. And I have never met um, such strong women of women who have gone through infertility um, at, at any degree of infertility. Um, we are some strong 
um, to have gone through the things that we go through, the the daily appointments, the shots, the, all of that, you know, um, just to fulfill the dream of having a child. Yeah. Um, it was is totally worth it. I would do it all over again. Um, but yeah, you're not alone in that sense of there's a whole lot of us out there that yeah. want to help, that want to be that community for someone. So, mm. yeah. Yes. I love that. There's a whole army. There is like in my head on like, there is like a whole army of women out there who are going through this and who are absolutely powerful in the sense that they can just keep going and keep picking themselves up and keep doing that. And then want to be able to share, you know, their love and support onto other women as well. Um, So Tell, I guess just tell everyone how they can access, find you and access um, Woven Social. Yeah, so um, Woven Social, the website is wovensocial.net and you can go in um, and sign up for a profile. And if you use the code, just for you guys, WS Girlfriends, it'll give you a free membership for life. Uh, we started three months ago and so we are just getting the word out and we're kind of building our little community slowly but surely so um if you use the code ws girlfriends it'll give you a free uh, membership but you can also find us on instagram um get some random posts thrown your way uh just different feature highlights um we are on instagram at woven.social yeah so yeah it's amazing. I'll, I'll also put like all of that in the um, in the caption with this video as well. But um, I just I love what you're doing, and I encourage women to really, you know, the fact that you're giving them after watching this video the chance that they can get a free membership, like that's amazing. And I really encourage women to jump in and take advantage of that because to be surrounded by women who are going through it, who know the emotional roller coaster, who know um, the ins and outs of what you go through in your day, who know that, you know, the, those um, tough, you know, decisions and triggers that come through in your day-to-day life as well. That yes, to be surrounded by people, women like that is just amazing. And it's going to make your journey so much lighter when you can share that um, load with other women and you can share your heaviness with people who actually really understand then and truly understand um, and then it's going to allow you the chance to you know show up in your life in a more kind of confident way because you have people that actually do have your back and that you have a place where you can where you are having down days, you can go in and you can you can um, unload everything. Or if you're having an up day, you can go in and you can encourage someone else that's having a down day. Yeah, definitely. It's for women who are going through it. And also we need women who have gone through it. Um, mm. We need both um, just to, to build this community. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And yes, like... It's something that I will um, always um, share and be a part of. And I love that, you know, it's also something that I've been able to create, like create a group within your, within your space as well for women who have gone through pregnancy loss. Um, Because, you know, when you are trying to conceive and going through all of those, all the emotions like you said you know you fell you fell pregnant your first time and um it unfortunately ended in loss so the fact that you know we aren't sort of immune to it even though you are in that infertility stage unfortunately there are the there can be the losses as well and you know the statistic of losses is like one in four pregnancies end in loss so there is lot of women who are struggling with with the trauma and with the emotional um, heaviness of grief and loss that don't have anywhere to go feel like they don't have anywhere to go and they don't want to share that they are going through that so that support system is so small at that moment you know yeah 
So yes, I encourage everyone to get in, take up um, Brooklyn's uh, offer of her free membership. I will put that in the um, in the notes as well. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate you coming on today, Brooklyn, and sharing your story and sharing your your support system and network and community. I love what you're doing. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to get to know all of you and um, let's be friends. <laughs> and I are already best friends and I, you know, I need more. So <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait to meet all of you and hear your stories and just be a tiny, tiny part of your life. Um, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, love you. Thank you for being here and yes, I'm sure we will keep in touch. So yeah, <laughs> um, anyone comment your takeaways as well of what um, we've spoken about today. What is something that, um, yeah, you can take away from our chat today. Lots of love. Love you.